Joining us now to clear the air on uh, the entire Agnipat scheme is Lieutenant General V.G. Khandare. General Khandare is currently advisor to the Ministry of Defence. General Khandare, namaste and thank you for speaking with us here at CNN News 18. My first question to you, sir, is right from the service chiefs to the national security advisor, everybody has stepped up to clear the air on the misinformation. But let me ask you, what was the need for the Agnipat scheme in the first place? What's the thought process behind it? Uh, Anand, the requirement of transformation in our armed forces has been there for a very long time. You are aware and the entire nation is aware that the age profile has been going up. And uh, right from the time right. that in 1967, we had the color service of seven years increasing to 10 years. Then in 1976, it moved from 10 years to 17 years and the age profile kept going up. And meanwhile, we were continuously going through uh, phases of different wars. Like in, till 67, we had gone through the 47-48 war, then the 62 war result was obvious. Thereafter, we went in for the 1965 war, then the 1971 war, then the Cargill. And all through, uh, we've had various other skirmishes and conflicts whether it was Op Pawan or whether it was in Siachen, J and K and Northeast were continuing. And all these lessons were coming to us that age profile has to reduce. You are aware of the Kagil Review Committee and uh, such an eminent person as Jay. Mr. K. Subramaniam said, bring the age profile down. So it's been a continuous requirement and it has been felt and emphasized. So that was the primary requirement to bring the age profile down, which we have not been able to do so far. But my curiosity, General Saab, is where did the confusion begin? Why is it that the coaching centers itself were instigating students who are training to be getting uh, enrolled into the army? Why is it that we see the, we saw the kind of protests and the kind of mayhem on the streets and public property being burned? Actually, Anand, uh, what uh, the entire nation has to understand and each one of us has to inculcate a strategic culture within the country. Uh, the understanding that a democratic country needs transparency, uh, does it need transparency in every field? Or there are two distinct things, one is development and second is security. So when you look at the uh, development model, the development domain, automatically uh, transparency is expected so that everyone knows how the country's growth trajectory is going to go in which everyone is a stakeholder but when you come to security domain your adversaries are watching you very closely how much of transparency is required how much of it is to be conveyed so that we don't compromise on our future uh, strengths we have currently some weaknesses those also have to be covered so when you say that uh, the confusion, the confusion has been made to uh, come up in a manner that it appears as if the whole country is at uh, war or so to say. And you see in the past couple of months, years, there have been agitations. The actors would be possibly the same. The triggers keep changing. But two main points where the confusion or perhaps the dissonance stemmed up from is that you have even had former Fauji saying that the entire regimental system is going to be done away with and that Agnipat will be the only form of bharti or recruitment. The misinformation campaign in current day environment is something which we have to guard against and uh, it's a kind of a reality because the moment you look at widespread information being available and the kind of proliferation of misinformation which is enabled by technology in current day environment, such dangers will have to be faced by the government and most of the noble intentioned schemes will also come under tremendous pressure because of such misinformation campaigns. And uh, that unfortunately, uh, to a large extent, brings the decision makers under pressure. So when a decision maker is taking a bold decision and such protests come up, the subsequent generation of decision makers do also start considering whether they should take such bold decisions 
or they should now wait for their tenures to be over and let somebody else handle it. Maybe these are the reasons that uh, such confusion has been uh, widespread. So is the regimental system going to stay? And eventually will Agnipat will be the only form of recruitment? See two questions. Firstly, regimental system and uh, regimental system continues because the regiment will continue. The people populating these regiments will continue to uh, form a part of all India class composition. But what is more important is regimental system or regimentation. This is where people uh, get a little confused because when you say regimentation, it is the grooming and kind of molding of a raw recruit into a regimental soldier, a regimented soldier. So that is the same thing that happens to officers also. When we join, when I joined as a youngster, I came straight from a civilian stream. Yeah. There was nobody from my family. But the regimentation system which molded me to what I am today. So regimental system and regimentation combined together gets you the best possible results. Uh, whether Agnipath is the only uh, form of entry, uh, recently that uh, notification, uh, notification has come out in which everything has been given in detail, each micro issue has been tackled in that. I would suggest people should go through that, especially the aspirants should go through that and those who are mentoring them uh, should explain so that there are no misinformation campaigns by interested parties who either have a personal axe to grind or Jay. who feel that chaos Jay. Jay. and ambiguity is what keeps people in power. Now, General Saab, there, there, are, there are a lot of former Fauji's who are saying this whole concept of Naam Namak Nishan will be done away with when they are expressing their reservation on the tour of duty being replaced by this Agnipat scheme. Uh, the retired Fauji's who have been coming on air, uh, they are our seniors, we respect them and uh, in our civil society, everyone has freedom to give an opinion. Uh, their understanding may be for some reasons. My understanding is that Naam, Namak and Nishan is not going away Jay. because the unit structure is going to be the same. The commanding officers are going to be there. The officers are going to be leading the men from the front. Our men are very dedicated. So there is a question where uh, the leadership is going to uh, continue doing what they were doing. That is motivating the people, grooming them properly and ensuring that the national flag continues to fly high. Another aspect is the politics where not just outfits or individual outfits, but even political parties are claiming that this is an agenda to train RSS cadre. This is a preparation to train RSS cadre. How would you want to respond to that? And also the fact that you are getting set to unleash militia onto the streets of our country. Let me take it uh, slightly away from these allegations. Uh, in every forum, uh, we have been saying that we are facing or we will face a two and a half front threat. Uh, when you look at two and a half front threat, you definitely need a large number of young Three. reservists. You are aware of the reservist method that we have. Today, when our people retire at the age of 40, 50, 55, uh, they are not young anymore to be able to perform the jobs of reservists. You look at the way armies have suffered in conventional conflicts, the huge number of casualties, which means you need a second lineup to come up and take on the jobs. Those also have to be young and those have to be so well motivated and being capable of performing the same task that people on active duty do. Anybody can do simple mathematics and you can see with this present scheme, the number of reservists are going to be large number. We have a lot of confidence in our training, in our grooming and I am sure that these kind of people who go outside will be preferred to various other people in various jobs. Maybe Anand you can do a survey and you can ask the people whether these exiting people after four years would be suitable, you can list out 10 professions. 
you can ask them to give an index of 1 is to 5 and you see whether Jee. these people are suitable Jee. Jee. there or not. You are yourself aware that uh, uh, army is respected in society. So those people getting out of army or navy or air force, I am sure would be preferred in various other professions with the skills that they achieve and especially the entrepreneur skill. So I do not see this kind of alarmist view uh, coming true. And my, my final question, is this going to create more opportunities for youth or are there going to be more jobless roaming on the streets, especially between 17 to 23? Uh, the uh, macro level analysis is that we are essentially a service sector driven economy. Uh, you look at other countries which are production driven, you have some countries which are production sector plus service sector. Uh, the mere fact that everyone wants a permanent job and that too in a service sector does create a problem for a country. The moment we have these young boys and girls coming out and they are found capable to get absorbed in various sectors and out of that production sector will also be one of them. Jee. I think our economy is going to find a lot of strength. So whether they are going to be jobless or not, maybe apprehensions, maybe misgivings. Let's give it a chance. Let us look at the positives out of it and let us see that these motivated, well aligned and focused youngsters get into Jee. nation Jee. building. Jee. I think we should be positive towards that. Thank you. Thank you, General Khandari. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you.